Welcome back. In the last section, we covered the OSI seven layer model. Now within this framework, there are a few different protocols for sending information. Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP, adds acknowledgement and sequential delivery information to the data that allows the receiving end to confirm delivery of each data segment and return that information to the sender before allowing the next segment to be sent. This ensures that there is no loss of packets, but also increases bandwidth and time. QSYS sends most of its control information using TCP, but it handles its audio streaming using UDP, or User Datagram Protocol. UDP does not wait for the receiving end to confirm delivery. It simply continues to send all information as it comes in. It should be obvious why audio is streamed this way. You don't want to break up or slow the music down by waiting for delivery of every data segment. If you've ever tried to watch an online video that has a oh, buffer, what? You know what I'm talking about. Oh. And if you does end up dropping a few packets here or there, don't worry about it. The software corrects and covers for those packets and you'll never even know what happened. In addition, QSYS also uses its own multicast protocol known as QDP, which allows all the devices to identify each other on the network. This is how you can discover your inventory in the QSYS configurator, which we'll talk about in the next section. The speed of the network is important in letting QSYS get its task done. In order to maintain a complete network latency of less than 250 microseconds, a gigabit network is required. Consider, if it takes 12 microseconds for data to travel along a cable on a gigabit network, that would become 120 microseconds on a 100 megabyte network. Going through a switch takes 12 microseconds to enter and 10 microseconds for the switch to decide where to send the data. So if you have even one switch hop in your path, you're already above 250 microseconds of latency. That's why a gigabit network is required. QSYS can use up to 84% of a gigabit network using 1.54 megabytes a channel. When you're choosing which switches to use, keep in mind that your switch must have wire speed non-blocking delivery with at least 40 kilobytes of dedicated buffering per port. And the total switch fabric must be greater than the port quantity, meaning that if you have eight ports on a gigabit switch, the total switch fabric must be able to handle eight gigabytes. Additionally, your system must be able to support DIFFServe, or 802.1p QoS, that stands for Quality of Service, which categorizes and prioritizes network traffic, allowing QSYS to operate on a shared network without segregating audio traffic with tedious VLAN configuration. All of this information should be readily listed on the spec sheet for your switches and routers, and a complete list of compliancy-approved switches are available at QSYS websites. QSYS also accommodates fully redundant networking configuration, including all standard layer three fault tolerance strategies, such as spanning tree. Spanning tree protocol, or STP, is a method of enabling and disabling redundant paths on a network to avoid signal loops. A data loop can be disastrous to a network as it floods the bandwidth and can bring all traffic to a stop. Spanning tree establishes a quickest path map for data to get through each switch on a network and disables the alternate paths. Then, if a connection fails, it dynamically changes which paths are open to create a new path, while still protecting from signal loops that could lead to infinite flooding or a broadcast storm. Now this has obviously just been a skimming of the surface when it comes to networking, but hopefully it gives you an idea of how QSYS exists in a network. And most of this information happens invisibly without you ever having to worry about it. But if you do have to worry about it, hopefully you can work with your IT partners and they'll know a lot more about it. Once your devices are properly connected to the network, they'll be discoverable by the QSYS designer software and you'll be able to integrate them into your audio design. Now to do this, you'll need to configure them with the QSYS configurator, which will be the focus of the next section. So feel free to take a short break here and we'll come on back whenever you're ready.